Most of Earth is water. And yet, we humans act like it's just the world's biggest swimming pool. In reality, it's not. The ocean is the single largest habitat on Earth, covering over 70% of our planet. But here's the shocking part. We've explored less than 5% of it. That means the ocean is basically like your friend's mysterious attic. Dark, creepy, and filled with things you really don't want crawling onto your face at 3 a.m. But instead of spiders, we're talking about creatures with glowing butts, faces only a mother squid could love, and teeth that look like they were designed by a horror movie director. Today, we're diving beyond the sunlight zone, where darkness rules, pressure crushes, and life gets really weird. From fish with headlights in their eyes, to predators with jaws that can literally unhinge, to animals that look more alien than anything in Star Wars, this is the ocean as you've never seen it before. So grab your snorkel, just kidding. You wouldn't last two minutes where we're going. And that's the point. These depths are not for us. They're for the strangest creatures evolution ever cooked up in its underwater laboratory. Ready? Let's dive. About 200 meters below the surface, sunlight begins to die. This is called the mesopelagic zone, or as I like to call it, the ocean's awkward teenage phase. There's just enough light to make things spooky, but not enough to see who or what is staring at you. Here, fish don't play by the same rules. Meet the lanternfish, one of the most common fish on Earth. They're tiny, but they've got built-in flashlights on their bodies. Why? To find food, flirt with mates, or confuse predators. Kind of like using your phone flashlight to find snacks in the kitchen at 2 a.m. Then there's the hatchet fish, which looks like it swam straight out of a Photoshop glitch. Its body is paper thin and reflects light like a mirror, making it nearly invisible. Basically, the hatchet fish invented underwater stealth mode long before humans thought of cloaking devices. And of course, we can't forget the bristle mouthfish, which is small, shiny, and one of the most abundant vertebrates on the planet. Translation, there are probably more bristlemouth fish than all birds, mammals, reptiles, and amphibians combined. And yet, almost nobody has heard of them. Imagine being the most common creature on Earth and still being ignored. Brutal. The Twilight Zone is also where bioluminescence rules. Nearly 90% of species here can glow. Some use it like a fishing lure, others as a burglar alarm, and some just because, hey, if you live in total darkness, might as well light up like a rave party. And we're just getting started. Because the deeper we go, the stranger it gets. Welcome to the Bathypelagic Zone, AKA the Midnight Zone, 1,000 to 4,000 meters down. At this point, sunlight has officially quit its job. It's darker than your ex's sense of humor down here, and life has had to get creative to survive. First up, the giant squid. These legends can grow over 40 feet long, with eyes the size of basketballs. Why so big? Because in pitch black, those massive eyes are basically IMAX screens for spotting faint flashes of light. Fun fact, for centuries sailors thought giant squid were sea monsters that dragged ships to the deep. Turns out they're just shy, squishy noodles with tentacles. Then we've got the anglerfish, the deep sea's poster child for nature got weird. This fish literally grows a glowing fishing pole out of its forehead. The light lures prey close enough for the anglerfish to chomp. And if you think that's wild, wait till you hear about their love life. The male anglerfish is tiny, and when he finds a female, he bites her, and then fuses into her body permanently. He basically becomes a living testicle. Deep sea dating is rough, folks. Other residents include jellyfish that can glow like fireworks, and gulper eels with jaws that unhinge like they're auditioning for a horror film. Pressure here is 100 times greater than at the surface, the equivalent of having an elephant sitting on every inch of your body. And yet, life doesn't just survive, it thrives. The midnight zone is a constant party of glowing, biting, and weird mating strategies. But believe it or not, things are about to get even stranger. Time to sink deeper into the abyss. 4,000 to 6,000 meters down, 
we reach the Abyssal Zone, a place so empty and vast, it makes space look crowded. Forget beaches and coral reefs, down here it's nothing but endless mud plains, silence, and creatures that look like rejected Pokemon designs. Take the Gulper Eel. Sure, we mentioned it before, but here's the kicker. Its mouth is so big, it can swallow prey almost its own size. It looks less like a fish and more like a balloon with a bad attitude. Then there's the Siphonophore, a colonial creature that can grow over 150 feet long, making it longer than a blue whale. And the wild part, it's not one animal, but a colony of thousands of tiny organisms working together, like a living underwater apartment building. Life here relies on something called marine snow. Sounds magical, right? It's not. It's basically dead plankton, poop, and bits of decaying stuff slowly falling from above. Imagine living your whole life waiting for a buffet of cosmic dandruff to drift down from the ceiling. Glamorous. Other abyssal weirdos include the vampire squid. Don't worry, it doesn't suck blood. It just looks goth with red eyes and a cape-like web of skin. And then there are sea cucumbers, which are basically squishy vacuum cleaners of the ocean floor, sucking up whatever edible junk they can find. The abyss is terrifyingly empty, but somehow bustling with the strangest survivors on Earth. But if you think this is extreme, hang tight, because next comes the Huddle Zone, where the ocean decides, let's crank the difficulty level to maximum. Welcome to the Hadal Zone, named after Hades, god of the underworld. Fitting, because this is basically hell on Earth, 6,000 to 11,000 meters deep. Here lie the ocean trenches, including the Mariana Trench and its deepest point, the Challenger Deep. The pressure? Oh, just about eight tons per square inch, like 50 jumbo jets sitting on you. Down here, it's so crushing that most animals are small, squishy, and completely transparent. One superstar is the snailfish, a ghostly little creature that thrives at depths we'd instantly turn into a pancake. Scientists say it looks cute. Personally, I think it looks like jello with fins. There are also amphipods, tiny shrimp-like creatures that can survive even in these insane conditions. They feed on whatever trickles down, including, you guessed it, more marine snow. It's poop and death all the way down, folks. But here's the twist. Even here, at the deepest point on Earth, scientists found plastic bags. Yep, humanity managed to pollute the bottom of the Mariana Trench before we even explored it properly. We are truly overachievers at ruining things. And yet, the Hadal Zone might still hold secrets. We've barely studied it. Who knows what undiscovered monsters, glowing giants, or microscopic super beings are hiding down here? For all we know, the cure for cancer is swimming around at 10,000 meters right now, next to a Doritos wrapper. The Hadal Zone is proof that life can thrive even in places that seem impossible. But it's also a reminder, nothing is too remote for humans to mess up. So what did we learn today? That the ocean is not just big. It's a dark, bizarre carnival of biology that makes space look boring. From lanternfish lighting up the twilight zone to anglerfish with their creepy forehead flashlights, to abyssal giants longer than whales, to the ghostly survivors of the trenches, the deep sea is alive, and it's stranger than anything Hollywood could dream up. It's also fragile. These creatures have spent millions of years adapting to extreme darkness, pressure, and scarcity. And yet, in less than a century, we've managed to send plastic, chemicals, and even microfibers from our clothes down to their world. Imagine finally discovering your new neighbor, and they immediately dump trash in your yard. The deep sea is not empty. It's full of life, stories, and secrets waiting to be told. And here's the scary part. We've seen almost none of it. Every dive into the deep brings new discoveries, new creatures, and new reasons to wonder. So next time you look out at the ocean, remember, beneath those waves is a world stranger, scarier, and more beautiful than any alien planet. And if we're smart, we'll protect it, before it disappears forever. After all, the ocean's darkest secret might just be that it's not as endless as we think.